Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lesson 3 in the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. What's up today, man? It is another beautiful day in Collegeville. It is. We're just recording Excel videos, having the time of our life. No place I would rather be right now, especially today. Do you know why today? Why is that, sir? We'll take a look at this goals list. We get to learn how to insert and delete rows and columns. We get to gain the ability to format our columns. And this is probably one of the most important Excel benefits, being able to copy and paste something using shortcuts. That was an awesome transition, and I do fully agree that copying and pasting is one of the, it's so simple, as we're going to find out, but you do it all the time. When we think of those specific actions and descriptions as far as what we're going to do today, we're going to learn how to toggle between some open programs, adjust column width, we're going to insert a new column or a row, we're going to learn how to quickly select an entire column or a row, we're going to select the entire contents of a whole worksheet, we're going to learn how to delete columns and rows, and yes, we are also going to learn how to copy and paste. That's a great day. Let's get into it, man. Yes. Let's do it. All right, so this template, <laughs> we have... Oh, you don't like this? No, oh, it's <laughs> ugly. This is actually data that we pulled in from the Home Depot financial statements to use for this template. And what the first skill we wanted to show you today was Alt-Tab, being able to switch from this screen quickly and easily to this screen, which is where our Home Depot financial statements actually are. I learned this one when I was in public accounting and it saved me so much time. When you have so many screens open, alt tab, just quickly switching in between. I'm it's gonna wonderful. give a big uh, thumbs up on that one. This one is huge as far as bouncing, uh, bouncing back and forth. You don't have to click all over the place. And frequently, you might sometimes you have a lot of screens open, sometimes you only have two, but you're constantly trying to get info from one onto the, onto the next. You just go boom, 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 back and forth. Even faster than like splitting your screen so you can see both. Yeah. Of it. So totally. just a little alt tab, alt -tab. to go Love back it. and forth. The sooner you get used to it, the better your life is going to be. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, Boz, when you see this, you obviously didn't like it. No. What is one thing you want to change right away to make it more readable? Uh, well, quick thing is I just want the columns to be a little bit wider. Is that what you were hoping for? And that this is exactly <laughs> what I was hoping you would say. And there's a few different ways to do it. Let's start with slow and move towards fast. How about I, that? I like it. All right, so slowest way, if you just move your mouse over between the A and the B on that little line where it looks different like it does right now, and then you can click and just drag it over. And all right, I think that's about good. And mm -hmm. now, oh, I didn't get it all. I didn't, I didn't get it quite. So I got to click it, drag it a little farther. Uh, still not there. All right. That's got to do it. That's pretty good. You know, and that'll work, right? A and reality is if you're doing that in the real world, it's only taking you a few seconds. Not a huge deal until you think about how often you're going to do this. You can save a few seconds every time by doing it uh, on a more streamlined basis. It's all going to add up pretty yeah. soon. So one step faster. I'll take this one and give you the last one. How about that? Uh, sounds great. All right. So one step faster then between B and C. I can see the date's not exactly mm -hmm. you know, visible necessarily. Yeah. So what I can do is, again, just wait till I have the same you know, arrow in between B and C and then just double click on the mouse pad. And that automatically sizes column B for me to fit the width of anything in there, the longest yes. string of text in column B. Yes, I love it. Hit me with a faster one. Well, do, um, we could either highlight two columns at the same time and do it, or are you thinking of the whole sheet on this one? Which one were you thinking right now? Because normally me, when I do something like this, I go right to the whole sheet. Are you okay if I yeah, go there right now? Yeah, let's go straight to the whole sheet. What Boz is me mentioning, you can highlight a couple and then double click that way, mm -hmm. and they'll go auto size in that regard. But I'm going to undo what I just did there and undo the one before that as well. It'll make make this a little bit more impressive, your visual here. Yeah, well frequently when I just get to a spreadsheet like this that's got a, that has a lot of com, uh, columns that need to be resized, what I want to do is just select the whole sheet at once and then double click between any of those columns really and it'll auto size all the columns at once. Two ways that you can select uh, the, whole, uh, the whole sheet at once. You know, some people will click right between that A and the one, a lot of people will do that. And then what the point is, is now you just could double click between the A and the B or between the B and the C, between any of them, every column is resized. But I am a huge, if you could just give me a control Z right now, undo that and then click somewhere else off to the side. I am a huge control A guy. You are a big control A guy. <laughs> yes. This I don't use this one probably as much as I should, but it is pretty useful. So show us how it works in this context. Show you how it works. Press control A. 
Control A. <laughs> wow, look at that. It's almost yeah. like A stands for all. So you're highlighting all or everything in the spreadsheet. Absolutely. So just go ahead, double click. Yeah, boom. We're all auto sized right now. You know, let's get them an actual extra cool feature of Control A. All right. It's a sub feature, you might yeah. say. Yeah. So we said Control A shows you how to highlight the whole worksheet. It does. Mm -hmm. But let's click into our little table right here. If I hit Control A right now, it first just highlights my selection. And as long as I have the selection highlighted, I might as well just use that comma button that I like so much. Yeah, a we couple learned decimals. Them. Yeah, we taught them last time on that one. So throwback, mm -hmm. throwback <laughs> Thursday. It is Thursday today. Throwback. There you go. So, and then if I hit Control A again, then it'll go back to the entire sheet. So first it'll highlight if you're within like a table within your sheet, it'll just highlight that whole table and then it'll highlight everything else. Yeah, which is very cool. So love to, uh, love to use it that way. All right, next mm -hmm. up, order of business is going to be adding in some subtitles here. So you got net sales and cost of sales. Um, after that, you typically want to see a line for gross profit, gross margin, gross profit. Mm -hmm. I'm partial to gross profit today. Are you okay with that? I'm good. I'm good either way. All right. So mm -hmm. the slow way to add a row in this case, the slow way of doing that would be to click on five right there and then right click and you can hit insert. And that's going to add a whole new row for you. I used to do that for a long time until I learned a better shortcut. And so the, my favorite shortcut for adding a row is to do shift space bar. That highlights the whole row. And then to add one, it's like adding addition, you need the plus sign. So control shift plus. And there you go. You have an extra row. It's a little bit to remember, right? Shift space bar, and then you got to do the control shift plus. But once you've done this one a couple dozen times or something like that, it becomes second nature. And you're going to be using Excel for a lot, a lot of years, right? So just, you know, discipline yourself, try to remember and practice something like that. And the dividends will pay off in the future. Perfect. And so we'll go through and do the math in just a second here. But first, I, Boz, I want you to go through your way. After um, impairment loss here, we are going to add a line for operating income. Oh, I normally would have done it. How would you add a row? Well, and it's a little, you know, it's a little slower. Once in a while, it can bring up different features that can be handy. So I would be right there and then I would hit control shift plus. All right. So the whole row is not selected right yep. now. Just one cell in the row. Control shift plus. Yeah, and then I would just arrow down once to entire row. Yeah, so with the arrow keys, you can move the radio buttons here. And yep. so now I'm down to entire row. I just hit enter, and that does the exact same thing. And that, and that is slower. As, as you saw, when you did the control shift plus, it, it brought up four options for you. So sometimes you just want to put down certain cells. So that can be a time where you can use that. But if all you're trying to do is insert a row, the way that you demonstrated would be the one that people should try to remember. Perfect. And then one more that we're going to do here, um, right above the provision, provision for income taxes, we'll taxes. go shift space and then control shift plus. Boz, what do you want to call this line? Uh, Pre-tax income. Pre-tax uh, income works for me. Yeah. Income before income tax. They get a lot of different names for it. Pre -tax Profit income. before tax. <laughs> Profit before tax. Yeah. There you go. A bunch of different ways to say it. All right. And then the last one is net earnings. That's already there. Yeah. So we have all of our rows added in. What we're going to do next is quickly enter in all of the math that we need to do. So we learned this way back in lesson one. Mm -hmm. To figure out our gross profit, you're going to hit the equal sign, arrow up a couple times to net sales, hit the minus sign, arrow up once the cost of sales, hit enter, boom, there you go. You got gross profit. And people are now thinking you're going to go to sell C5 and D5 and just do that exact same thing. That's what they're thinking you're about to do. I am not going to do I'm going to hit escape as fast as I can to get out of that. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is probably... Like we said before, one of my very favorite Excel shortcuts, I'm going to hit control C to copy. Then I'm going to go over one to um, column D and hit control V. And that's going to go ahead and paste it for me. And we'll show you how you can do that even a little bit faster next time. But again, it still has kind of like the, the dash line around it. That tells me that that formula is still copied. So if I arrow over one more time to the right, I can hit control V and that same formula were post. Yep. And so if I double click in this cell, you can see it's taking net sales in 2018 minus cost of sales in 2018. Perfect. And I'm good. Yeah. You, you could also have right click copied, right click pasted. And wow. I mean, that would, that would be better than using this as a typewriter, doing it on your phone and just typing it in. But wow, it's just so much slower. Do that control C control V. It's a lifesaver. All right, so let's take it to the next step. Maybe combine it with something that we learned last time mm -hmm. where to get our operating income, we're going to take our gross profit, subtract selling general and admin, subtract depreciation, and subtract the impairment loss. 
Okay, so we have 15,843 in operating income. I want to paste that formula over to 2019 and 2018, but only do one, you know, one time of doing it. So I can hit control C to copy it. You see the dotted line comes up, so I know it's copied. Then I'm going to hold the shift key and then arrow over to the right two times and get this. Instead of hitting control V to paste it, I'm just going to hit enter. Yeah. Boom. Enter. There you go. It posted over and now you can see that dotted line is no longer around that box, which means it's not copied anymore. If I go over here and hit control V, nothing happens. I don't have anything copied. I, you know, when you, after you've done the control C, the control V, I like to say kind of keeps it alive if you're going to be doing it more times. Otherwise you just hit enter if you don't need to keep it alive. And, and frankly, it's the, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of difference in time. The enter key's a little bigger, so I tend to, if I'm only pasting once, hit enter. If you'd hit control V, it would have been fine there as well. There you go. Yeah, and you know what Ben just did is he did it, he, he pasted into two cells, which you might be like, well, you didn't save a lot of time by just highlighting two cells in doing that. But what the point is, sometimes in, in the business world, you will work with hundreds, thousands, Ten thousands, hundreds of thousands, right? I don't know if I've ever done it into the millions, but there are people that do that. And you don't want to copy paste one after the other for that many times. Exactly. All right. Well, one last time for pre-tax income, operating income minus our interest in investment income minus our interest expense. I copy shift key over to the right twice, and then I'll do a Boz's way and hit control V. In All right. Case. There you go. Why is that my way? I think control V or enter are fine. I like, I enter. like enter too. Good, I'm going to hit enter. Now I feel a little bit better about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call it my way. I didn't claim ownership to All that right. one. Well, before we get too distracted, <laughs> we got a couple more things we want to show you with this one. We have all of our information. We're not going to worry about borders right now to keep mm -hmm. this video under control. But it is nicer to add a little space between each year. Just let's add one more column in between just as a spacer. Yep. So my favorite way to do this is to hit control space bar. Control space bar to highlight the column. Mm -hmm. And then to add one, control shift plus. Yep. There you go. And this one, it automatically comes out to the same size as column D did. I'm going to just manually click and drag that one to make it the size that I want. I think that looks good for a little gap. Sure. If we want to do the Boz method, we can just do control shift plus for this one. And this time, instead of entire row, we're going to arrow down to entire column yep. and hit enter. And there we go. Boom. We have an entire column up. Yeah. Ben calls it the Boz method. It's mainly, it's the one I usually use. I do think that Ben's is quicker. So I recommend that one again with what, when he said my method, if you only wanted to paste certain cells over or something like that, or, or move certain cells to the side, that's when that one can be handy. But in this spreadsheet, you wouldn't do that. We got, I believe we got one more shortcut to show them. You ready for it? I am. I'm excited about it. All right. So I'm just going to pretend I accidentally hit plus, you know, a couple extra times. Uh oh, yep. I have extra columns here. Mm -hmm. And now I want to remove an entire column. Just delete it all at once. Yeah. Now, certainly you would just, if you did it right now, what you would do is just hit control Z to undo. But Ben's point is more like he comes in later to this, mm -hmm. to this and sees multiple extra columns. And he just didn't do it. So he can't just hit control Z to undo. Exactly. So I'm going to highlight the column, control space bar. And then to remove the column, I'm going to do control minus. And now you can see we got rid of one extra one there. If I hit control minus again, boom, we got rid of another extra one. And um, this would work as well using without highlighting the column first. If you're just you know, in column E in any random cell and hit control minus, then you can, uh, so now this says delete on top. We're going to delete it. So then use the arrow keys to go down to entire column, hit enter for OK, and there you go goes away i think that works yeah those are some really quick tools but wow we use them all the time don't we saves a ton of time absolutely all right should we double check make sure we covered everything i think we made it through it all you think so i hope so all right well now hopefully you remember how to toggle between open programs adjust column widths the fast way not the slow way insert new columns and rows select entire columns and rows select the entire worksheet delete certain columns and rows and of course copy and paste I think we covered it all, so thanks everybody for tuning in to the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video number three. Come back next time for video four. Talk to you later, everyone.